Chef Gail Sokol and welcome to my kitchen. Today we're making bunny cookies because it's Easter time, it's spring, so we're making the bunny cookies and they're so cute. Get the kids involved because they're a lot of fun. But before we get started, I want you to click that notification button. I don't want you to miss any of my tips and videos, so you must become a subscriber. I really would love it uh, because I love having you in my kitchen. All right, bunny cookies. So the first thing I do is preheat my oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And these are more like little cakes. So they're like three dimensional sort of puffy cookie cakes. And I have lined two sheet pans with parchment paper and I set them aside and we're gonna use an ice cream scoop, like a two ounce, one quarter cup or so ice cream scoop. You can make them bigger or smaller depending on what you wanna do. Now we're using the creaming method of mixing. And if you followed my videos, it's very simple. It's one of the major baking mixing methods. And it's usually for cakes and certain cookies. So the first thing we're gonna do so we got to get some of our mise en place, you know, everything in its place before we get going. So we are going to get our dry ingredients ready first. And in this bowl, I like to whisk them separately to make sure they're homogeneously blended. Two and a half cups of all-purpose flour. I have one teaspoon of baking powder. That's our chemical leavener. That's the thing that's going to help these beautiful cookies get puffy. And a teaspoon of salt. So you're gonna whisk that up, all right? You're gonna whisk that up, and that's gonna go in after we do the creaming of our sugar and our butter. That's the other major um, way to start the creaming method. You start with room temperature butter, and you mix it on medium speed. I'm gonna go get a spoon. You mix it on medium speed so that the butter turns almost white. Notice the butter now is yellow and it's softened. I left it out for a couple hours to get soft. If you want, you can put it in your microwave, but beware, microwaves will melt butter. You don't want it melted, you want it softened. So when you put your finger in it, it holds the indentation. So my way of doing it is just leaving out for a few hours, it works great. So in a bowl of an electric mixer, I have one tablespoon I'm sorry, one stick and three tablespoons. So that's 11 tablespoons of unsalted butter. And I am going to use my paddle attachment, which is always what the uh, creaming method uses. And I'm going to get my sugar in there and cream it on medium to high speed to force air into the butter. And those little air cells, because solid fat holds air, those little air cells are going to work together with the baking soda, sort of like a team, and they're going to help create beautiful, uniform, tiny, tiny little holes in our cake, our little bunny cookie cakes, and help them rise. All right, so I am going to um, first add my, let's see, I'm going to see how much sugar I need to add, because I didn't memorize it, one cup. So I'm gonna put one cup of granulated sugar, and you want granulated, don't use brown sugar, because you want these to be nice, uh, bright cookies. All right, I'm gonna put this on medium, to medium high speed. And you wanna see the butter turn pale yellow, because right now it's a little deeper yellow, it's gonna turn pale. Um, and you're gonna see it almost get light and fluffy. And you'll see that in ingredients sometimes, they'll say, Feet with a paddle attachment until light and fluffy. But don't think it uses uh, the beater, you know, the, the attachment that looks like a whisk. You don't want that. You want this type of an attachment, which is, um, you want this with the um, paddle attachment. All right, so once I have the dry ingredients, I'm gonna set them aside. And in an electric mixing, I'm sorry, in a liquid measuring cup, three tablespoons of unflavored vanilla uh, or unflavored yogurt or vanilla yogurt. Don't use anything with fruit in it. So I, here I have plain yogurt. Use fully fatted. You can use fat-free, but plain or vanilla. Three tablespoons. 
And then fill the rest with any type of milk that you like. Could be regular milk, could be lactate milk, could be oat milk, whatever you want to use, coconut milk, whatever. And put it in there till it comes to two thirds cup. And then we're going to add one teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. Always use pure vanilla extract. Now this is where the creaming method comes into play. We're gonna start alternating things in a minute, but what we wanna do first is we're gonna put this on a low speed. And then let me show you what this looks like now. Let me show you. So you see how nice and fluffy that is? Look how fluffy, sort of like fluffing stuff that you might get inside a mattress, or inside a couch. I don't want, that's not what it's gonna taste like, but it sort of looks sort of cool. So we're gonna put this on low speed. We're gonna add two eggs, but we're adding them one at a time. So you're gonna add one egg. I have them cracked in some sort of a container with a spout on it. Put one egg in, and I know it's about one egg when the yolk sort of flops in, that's about one egg. And you're gonna actually mix it until that egg is incorporated and not add the second egg until the first one is fully incorporated. And we're gonna keep going. And then we're gonna scrape down the sides of our bowl. So now I'm gonna add my second one. And then I may scrape down the sides of the bowl here to make sure everything is blended in. And you can up the speed a little bit. What you don't wanna do is have mixing this particular batter, this cake, cake batter with, or cookie batter, with once the flour's in there, you don't wanna mix on high speed because that mixing creates what's known as gluten. And that gluten is a powerful protein in, it's like a protein matrix in baked goods and it creates toughness. So we want light and sort of fluffy cakes. They're gonna be sort of cakey cookies. Okay, so you see what it looks like with the, with the egg. It really looks nice and sort of fluffy. All right, so once I get this cleaned off, all right, now we're gonna alternate dry and wet ingredients. So what I usually do is I add half the dry ingredients first, and then I'm going to add half of the yogurt mixture. So I'm, you gotta do low speed or you're gonna end up wearing it. So we're gonna add half of our dry ingredients. And there's many ways to do this. Some people add a third of the dry ingredients at a time, but we have such a small amount of wet ingredients, our yogurt diluted with milk, that I don't want to just mix and then stop and mix and stop and start adding all different things. It's not gonna improve the uh, batter quality in any way. All right, so I have about half. All right, and then you're going to add about half, about half of your yogurt mixed with milk. All right, so I'm gonna put about half. So it's about two thirds now. You don't even have to measure it, just do about half, just eyeball it. So you have like about a third, that's about it. All right. Now once this is mixed, I'm gonna add the remaining, the remaining milk, okay? And I'm gonna save the, re the half to go in at the end. Cause I, you always wanna begin and end with dry ingredients. And like I said, sometimes I'll put in a third of the flour and then a third of this and go back and forth and back and forth. But there's such a small amount here. I'm just gonna let this go a little bit and add the rest of it now. Whoops. And it did fling back at me. Ah! All right. It happens. And now once you get that in there, it's beautiful batter too. Where do you see it? Now I'm gonna start adding the rest of my dry ingredients. So this is the remainder of the dry ingredients. Again, you can alternate any way you want as long as it's beginning with dry ingredients like the flour mixtures, your dry ingredients, and ending with the dry ingredients. All right, but there's such a small amount of the 
yogurt and milk that I just wanted to get them in there. Okay. And here, I'm going to give this a little shove in there. All right. Give it one good go around and stop. All right, where do you see this batter? This is a gorgeous batter. This is a batter a baker can be proud of. Look at this gorgeous batter. Look at this. Isn't that beautiful? Woo! I don't want to lose it. I don't want to lose it. But at the bottom of the electric mixing bowl, very often there's a little metal that pops up a little bit, just the way it's built so it fits on the motor. And once you clean off your paddle, you're going to go around the bowl so you get all the dry ingredients because you may have some dry ingredients on the bottom of the bowl. I bet you will, and that's okay. So we will not worry about it because we will blend them in, but you're not going to overmix. Okay, so you can see there are, there's a little flour, so we're just going to go around with a rubber spatula. You're not going to overmix, but you're just going to sort of Move it around to get all the dry ingredients in. Now this makes about 14 cookies, depending on how big you make them. Uh, they may make a dozen if you make them pretty big, or they can be made smaller if you want to use a spoon and a rubber spatula or a smaller ice cream scoop. I like using an ice cream scoop, but that's a beautiful batter, right? That's a really nice batter. So it's sort of a thicker, a thicker cookie batter it's almost, it's a cake batter, but it's really a cookie. All right, so now I'm going to take a scoop. And you don't even have to fill it all the way, but right to the, just to the top. Don't overfill it. And we're trying to get as close to, sometimes it doesn't want to come out. And you can spray, which I forgot to do, you can spray your, your ice cream scoop with some nonstick cooking spray. Let us do that, shall we? Sprayed that with nonstick cooking spray for my first one or my second one, and comes out a lot easier. And you want it sort of in a round shape, sort of a semicircle. And we're going to keep them a few inches apart on my sheet pan. But if you want to go into a third sheet pan, you can. Ultimately, they will stick a little bit, and that's fine. That's fine. These don't bake that long. It's about 14 to 15 minutes. You just want them light brown, and they should feel slightly firm to the touch. They're really easy to make. All right, so I'm going to continue filling my next a sheet pan with batter, and I will see you back after our bunnies bake. Bunny cookies came out of the oven. They're beautiful. They've cooled, and they made about 14 and one little one, so approximately 14 to 15, and they baked about 14 minutes, but again, your oven uh, will determine that. <clears throat> so now we're going to make what's known as a simple icing as the face of the bunny. So I have one and a half pounds or six cups of confectioner sugar, powdered sugar, in a big bowl. And then I'm going to add four tablespoons of light corn syrup. And this is going to have it and help it dry to a nice sheen, all right, because we do want it to dry a little bit. It's not a royal icing, but it's something similar. And then I did make a royal icing for decorating that you can get. Uh, from my website that I've made before. Here I have uh, two tablespoons plus two teaspoons of fresh lemon juice. And then let me go grab my water real quick. You can just get regular tap water um, and a tablespoon. And usually you're going to measure this very carefully. Too much water and you're going to have a real thin icing, too, uh, too little water and it's going to be too thick. So again, we're going to start with something that's a little thicker in the beginning. We're adding lemon juice because it just adds a little brightness to it. So I'm just going to bring that in. You can see 
it starts on the bottom to form like a thicker icing, and obviously I do need more water. So keep adding, adding it by tablespoonfuls, but not too many. So I have about one and a half, because I know I have a lot of sugar here. You see how it starts getting nice and loose here? So bring the outer ones, the outer powdered sugar in. And then eventually we're going to go to our rubber spatula to get everything together. Again, it's getting dry. I'm going to add a little more. Just a little bit. Don't want to overdo it. If you do get it where it's too thin, you can always add some more confectioner sugar. But then you're playing a game. Oh, let's add more water. No, let's add more sugar. And then you end up, it's just too, too crazy. It's a crazy thing when you're frosting or your icing is sort of in charge of you, and that's not good. So this is nice. This is the type of icing you would put over a cake, like a nice um, sponge cake, or maybe a coffee cake, or a cinnamon roll. So it's a little bit thick, but I want it thick so I can spread it. And you, you saw that that six cups of confectioner sugar go down real quick. They get real, they go from high up, and then they go sort of dissolve in the water and the lemon juice, and it goes real. So I actually think we're good. You see that? That's a nice consistency that's spreadable. Really nice. All right. So I'm going to get this off. And once we frost our cookies, I'm only going to do a few of them for you so you can see. We're using this as a base for the face. And then we're going to build our face so you can tell it's a bunny uh, in other ways. So let's see if we can do that. All right. So I'm just going to push that around, make sure I do have it all mixed. Usually with the whisk, it helps. But sometimes you need to just go all around the bottom of the bowl. OK, you know I like to do that. Now, if you see that your confectioner's sugar is lumpy for any reason, put it through a sieve. Super easy to do. So now I'm going to take a little bit, all right, and I'm going to frost the top of my cookie, my bunnies, my bunny faces, and I want that all covered on the top. If you want to do it on the bottom, you can, but I like to do it on the top because we need room for our ears. You know, bunnies have big floppy ears. Wait till you see the ears. Oh my God, it's crazy. It's crazy. These are going to be crazy bunnies. So get your kids involved. Let them frost. Let them mix the frosting. And this frosting should dry to a nice sheen, meaning it'll be shiny and it'll get firm. Not as hard as a royal icing, but it will get firm. All right. So I'm going to do one more for you. I'm just going to put that over here. And I'm going to take another one. Then I'm going to decorate. So you don't have to watch me decorate all of them, um, all 14 of these beautiful babies. And it looks like we don't have a lot of icing. That icing is enough to frost anything because we have a lot. So go around. Use your tiny offset spatula. You can even use a butter knife if you don't have one. And just gently go around. Be gentle with it. Remember, it's almost like a cookie cake. It's not like a hard sugar cookie. Uh-uh, not at all. So we're just going to go around like that. And then I'm just going to leave it. And if you see any you know, signs that like you can see where the offset spatula sort of touched it and made a line, it will actually melt out. All right, it will melt out. So I'm going to grab a paper towel so I can wipe my fingers off. And now the fun part, I'm going to move this out of the way. So I made some royal icing, and I made baby bunny pink, and I made what? I just made white. And we are going to take these, and let me take my, my one here. If you want, you can let this get hard, but you don't have to. And we're just going to put that here. I have some nice pink sugar. It's pretty large grain, but you can use any type you want. And I have probably the biggest marshmallows you'll ever see in your life. So I'm going to cut these because they're going to make great 
bunny ears. But before we do, we are going to, I have a tiny round tip and you can even use a freezer bag if you want, just cut the end a little bit smaller. And then I have a larger one with white. So we're gonna start with doing the eyes first. And I have little mini chips for the center of the eyes. So I'm just gonna do, and just do whatever you want. If one bunny doesn't come out right, you can redo it. So I'm just gonna go like that. Do one on the other side. Okay, and then we're gonna put the chip upside down so that the point is facing down. Whoop. And we don't wanna make them scary. You don't want scary bunnies. <laughs> we want friendly bunnies. Friendly bunnies. All right, now I'm gonna put that down because that's all I needed the white for. And then I'm taking the small one and I wanna make a bunny nose. Now bunny noses are usually upside down, upside down triangles. So let's see why this is not coming out. Here it is. It's very slow. Couldn't have dried yet. Hold on. What happens? Let's take a look and see what happened. Nothing. We just wet this for a sec. These are things that happen when you, when you work with royal icing. Sometimes it dries a little. Yep, there we go. It just dried a little, no problem. So I'm just gonna do a practice, okay? Always do a practice. And this is like a cutting board that I just have to practice or a large plate. And I'm just gonna do a, lo a little bit of a triangle, all right? Because we wanna get a bunny nose, all right? So I'm gonna do an upside down triangle. All right, we're gonna fill it in with the pink. Fill it in, fill it in, fill it in. All right, and then bunnies have the mouth, right? Goes like that. So we're gonna go straight down. And then we're gonna go around like that. And around like that. I'm smiling so I look like a bunny. And now, the fun part. All right, I'm gonna turn this around so you can see it. The fun part. I think, are the ears. Now what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna put a little, they need cheeks, like little bunny cheeks. Okay, bunny cheeks, that one's gotta be a little fatter. And then I took little bits of tiny pasta, uncooked of course, and I was thinking what else could I use to make whiskers? But there's a lot of different things you could use uh, but nothing as nice as like spaghetti. This is angel hair, all right, tiny angel hair, and they have about three, right? If you look at your cat or your rabbit, maybe you have a pet rabbit, usually about three whiskers. Three whiskers, ooh. And then the piece de resistance is going to be the ears. Those are my favorite. Those are my favorite. All right. So we're gonna take scissors, you want kitchen scissors, not scissors that have been like someplace else, like in your book bag or someplace at work. You really want them nice and clean. And then you're gonna cut. So this is a jumbo marshmallow. You don't wanna cut lengthwise unless you really want a floppy bunny ear. So I'm cutting crosswise like a hunk and you're not gonna get it all in one fell swoop. So cut it from the other end. You really gotta open it up. Okay, and just pull it apart. And see how that sort of, you can also reshape it like a bunny ear. And then I have this pink sugar. Put it, the sticky part in the pink sugar, right? It's a no brainer, see that? And then what I want to do, you may need a little bit more icing here, but you're not gonna see it. And we're gonna put our ears there, okay. <laughs> okay, now we gotta do another one. Another one, and you want a sticky end, so do it again. This is maybe about quarter of an inch thick. Okay, and we're gonna dip it in the sugar again. Dip, 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 
dip, dip, dip. Make sure you get it all sugary. And my bunny ears. You may want to put your eyes a little lower if you make, make, make ears this big. You have to remember, this is a really big marshmallow. This is a big marshmallow. Some marshmallows, you may not be able to get this big. So here you go. So I'm going to continue with my bunnies. Look how pretty my bunnies are. So I'm going to keep on making these cutie little bunnies. And you guys, I hope you make these. And I hope you become subscribers. And I hope you have a terrific Easter. Till next time.